A few of you have asked me what's eat hey. Well, for Cantonese kids, that's the word you dread. Hey, gao chou a yit hei a. Yit hei. Yit hei a. Bananas too? The direct translation of yit hei is hot air. In Mandarin, the term is shang huo, or the fire is up. These are not the direct meanings of the term. Yit hei is a traditional Chinese medical understanding and is widely used in day-to-day -day diets and actions. Before we begin, I'm not a doctor, although my parents wanted me to be, so this doesn't substitute professional medical advice. This is just my years of experience of being yelled at. Do you have pimples, itchy throats, bumps in your mouth, or not feeling 100%? It could just mean you have hot air. But it's not that simple. There's more than one type of yit hei, and it's not just foods that will cause it. What? There's more than one type of yit hei? Generally speaking, there is sat fo, shi huo, or real fire, and hui fo, shu huo, or fake fire. If we want to go deeper, the fire can affect your five organs, heart, stomach, liver, lungs, and kidneys. But for today's video, let's not go into too much detail. Human beings are composed of yin and yang, Yin is cold and yang is hot. When you have too much yang in your body, it causes an imbalance. That's when you are yi hei. Some people are naturally more fiery and some people are cooler. So the balance for everybody is a little different. So don't take this as absolute advice. For example, Kevin can eat a lot of fried foods, maybe a week's worth, before he feels anything. Whereas me, I will feel it after one meal. So the usual yi hei that we refer to is a sat fo or real fire, aka yang fire. Good news is that this one is mainly caused by food. Actually, that's also bad news because we have to control our diet. If you have sat fo, this is a time where you would want to reduce your fire and remove the toxins in your body. Cheng yi gai dou, qing re jie du. I'm sure you heard of the word cheng yi, qing re from your parents before. That's where it comes from. Here are the typical symptoms of when you have too much sat fo in your body. You get zits, swollen gums, dry mouth, stinky breath, canker sores, thick white coating on your tongue, dark yellow pee, sore throat, dry cough, constipation, and nobody wants any of that. Hui fo, shu huo, or fake fire is also known as yin fire. Fake fire is a little more complicated. It doesn't necessarily mean you have too much in your body. Well, the name implies it's fake, but your yin has gone down too much, so your yang side is overpowering. So let's say this is your ideal balance of yin and yang. When you have too much heat in your body, you eat too much junk food, you have real fire. But when you have too many late nights, stress from work, don't sleep well or exercise, you hurt your yin levels. Actually, that should be going down. <laughs> your yang overpowers and you think you have heat, but that's just your normal level of heat. So you actually need to replenish your yin and not remove your yang. Otherwise, you'll be too weak overall. Some of the symptoms of fake fire are biting your lips, mouth, and tongue. That's the worst. Dry red tongue with lines, sweating in your sleep, easily irritated and angered, maybe because of the lack of sleep, and some other hard fire symptoms may also occur. Sometimes people with fake fire think that they have too much heat, so they would just take herbal tea or eat cooling foods to try to remove the heat. This would actually make you even weaker and may even cause headaches or diarrhea. At this point, you want something that would bo yum, bu yin, to nourish your yin side. For this one, it's important to nurture your heart and soul. In Chinese medicine, mind and body is one, so if you have fake fire, maybe it's time to step back and do some meditation. You can also eat yin nourishing foods like duck, persimmon, goji berries, yogurt, and my favorite, black sesame paste. Now let's look at what foods are considered hot or cold in Chinese medicine. The concept of food is different for Chinese nutrition and Western nutrition. For Western, you may look at how many vitamins a certain food has to determine whether or not it's healthy for you. For Chinese, you may consider foods in hot or cold terms. The obvious culprits of yi hei are spicy foods, fried foods, hot pot, and barbecue. Certain things that you may think are healthy in Western nutrition might be, well, toxic or yi hei for Chinese. For example, fruits like mangoes, durian, cherries, and lychee. There's a saying in Chinese, yi lop lei ji san ba fo, yi li li zhi san ba huo. One lychee, three flames go up. It's generally recommended you don't eat more than 10 per day. 
but it's just so good. Ginger is something that is often used in Chinese cooking and can remove the cold moisture in your body. But if you have too much, it can also cause a sore throat. Lamb is good for people who have cold hands and feet, and it's something that many people eat during the winter to keep warm. But that's not for people who have hot face. You may sweat, be itchy, and can't sleep. Chocolate and, you know, junk food in general are all heaty. That's probably why we can only have hot flakes. Now, there are some foods that are interesting, like bananas. One banana can help reduce heat, but more than two bananas can cause heat and constipation. Why is that? It goes back to the real fire and fake fire concept. Because bananas are very cooling, you can use it to cool your heat. But if you have a cool base and you have more than one, it could make your yin weaker and cause a fake fire and become yid hei. So make sure to understand your body type before you consume too many bananas. Some foods might become yid hei depending on what cooking method you apply to it. Deep fried obviously will be hot. Baking, roasting, barbecuing will also be yid hei. Now, steaming and boiling is considered a neutral or cooling method, but how come hot pot is hot? Isn't that just boiled foods? Well, if you continuously boil your food and use soup bases like mala or satay, and even adding some heating herbs to it, your food will become hotter and hotter. And normally for hot pot, you would sit around the stove and chat and eat for hours and hours. You will absorb a lot of the hot air and smoke. This is why hot pot is considered yid hei. If you just boil your food, stop cooking and eat it as is, that's actually not yid hei. Now that you know what causes heat, how can you cool down? Besides herbal teas and Chinese medicines, which I would not go into because it's a lot more complex, here are some general cool foods. In the fruits category, we have bananas, as we mentioned before, eat with caution. No. Watermelon, there's a saying, hek xiang luan fai gua, yu ma ba yong zha, chi zhang liang kuai gua. Eat two pieces of melon, don't need to grab medicine. Pears, kiwi fruit, melons, papaya, mandarins, and tomatoes are also cooling. Now, do you consider tomatoes a fruit or vegetable? Comment below. For cooling vegetables, we have cucumbers, cabbage, bitter melon, celery, spinach, which is good for stinky breath and constipation, bean sprouts, good for canker sores and cracked lips, radish. That kind of explains why Koreans have so much radish with all their barbecuing and fried chicken. In terms of drinks, you can have chrysanthemum tea, grass jelly, aloe, winter melon tea, mung bean soup. These are all very good things to remove toxins from your body. At the end of the day, it's quite simple. Everything in moderation. Balance out yin and yang. If you're hot, eat cold foods. If you're cold, eat hot foods. Good luck. If you like this video, make sure to hit that like button and tell me, what's your favorite yid hei food? Mine is probably instant noodles. If you want me to explain anything else, let me know below. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time. Okay. Bye.